this is the this is sort of the basic message I wanted to give you uh, this late afternoon. What is important here is that the uh, when we think of uh, the role a religion would play in political system, uh, we sometimes do not think that religion may play uh, a role politics at three different levels. One level may be the level of the individual. For most people, uh, religion may be a system of belief. Uh, religion may be a source of uh, ethics, uh, virtues, but that would be the end of it. Uh, but then for others, uh, religion may be a communal affair people may want to live their religion in a certain manner and then they may turn around and try to uh, persuade others that they should also live their religion in the same manner. They may even want to exert some kind of a pressure. That's the community level as against the individual level. And, and then there's the level of politics or state. So if, if some people uh, think that the, uh, you know, government's policy should be informed by taking into account uh, religious tenets. That is, of course, what we usually call as political Islam. Now, when we, do, when we don't make this, uh, this very crucial distinction about the levels at which religion may play a role in general, then, of course, uh, we may very easily arrive at the conclusion that at any Muslim country, uh, at any time, uh, you may come across a reactionary movement, radicalism of the religion. This is another point uh, I, uh, I wanted to, to make. And if the chairman gives me two more minutes, I also would like to. You got it. I got it. Uh, I also would like to provide some statistics about Turkish society. Now, when I look at the, the findings of a number of reliable nationwide surveys in Turkey, I arrive at the conclusion that in Turkey, people would not bring to power a political party which would uh, favor a state based on Islam. Because people in Turkey are not voting uh, by taking into consideration whether or not a political party is uh, religiously oriented. In the, 19, uh, in the 1980s, there was one political party in Turkey, religiously oriented political party, the National Salvation Party. That political party uh, got at one election 11.2% of the votes. Four years later, that same political party obtained uh, 8, 8, 8 plus point of votes. In other words, that political party's votes went down when in fact we were thinking that everywhere, particularly in the, uh, uh, in the Muslim countries, the religion was under, on the rise. The, the religious feelings were, were on the rise. A and finally, let us look at the election results in 2002 and 2007 in Turkey again. I mean, uh, in 1980s, there was just one, one religiously oriented political party competing at the elections. Uh, in the early uh, 2000s, in 2002, we had two, AK Party, the, the, the Justice and Development Party, and Saadet Party the Felicity Party. Now, the Felicity Party was an openly religiously oriented political party. It got 2.5% of the votes in 2002, and in 2002, Justice and Development Party obtained 34, 34 3 or 4% of the votes. 2007, the same thing, and, and of course, Justice and Development Party uh, in 
introduce itself as a conservative democratic party. And, and we have seen, as again, Ergun Özbudun has implied, he really, that political party really did not act as a religiously oriented political party. It was during its term that you know, Turkey used to have or maintain uh, these uh, military agreements with, uh, with Israel. Among other things, you know, I can give you so many other examples. And finally, in 2007, the same thing happened. Now, again, Felicity Party and the Justice and Development Party competed at the elections, and the uh, Justice and Development Party this time raised its vote votes to 46.6 percent, and and the Felicity Party again re remained at 2.5. I think. Increased, increased a little bit. So what I am trying to say is that in Turkey, a religiously oriented political party cannot come to office through democratic means. In Turkey, the military uh, has sort of given up on its guardianship role to a great extent. So uh, uh, in Turkey, in other words, even religion is not even, in my opinion, shaping uh, the domestic scene so uh, 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 religion un under those circumstances would certainly not shape Turkey's foreign policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> now I'll turn to Henri Barkin. Uh, thank you. I realize I stand between um, you and the muggy weather of Washington, and which I'm sure you'd like to avail yourself of. but. As they say, everything has been said, but not by everybody. So uh, my job is to add my two cents. Um, what I will do is kind of look at um, the three issues together um, and try to offer a conceptual outlook and then focus at the end a little bit on the democratic opening separately. Um, you know, the three topics, constitutional reform, democratic opening, and civil military relations are things that as we heard earlier, uh, are issues that have been discussed for a very, very long time. And let's face it, um, the Kurdish issue is here today, today with, with Turkey after how many years? Since the <coughs> beginning of the Republic. And if you think about it, it is far, far, far from being resolved. And in fact, as I will argue at the end, it has a potential of uh, coming back in a very, very violent and potentially disrupting and destabilizing way. And you think about it, after all these years, in the 21st century, we're still talking about people having a right to teach their children in a language, having access to, to um, means of expression and, and communication. These are things that are being debated at a time when Turkey is still trying to become a member of the European Union where Europe has gone exactly in the opposite direction. So that's one issue. 